Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. My name is Rivers Langley. My name is Sam Harter. And we are joined today by our very special guest, the pride of the central part of the Sunshine State, our friend, Nat Bay Mel. Hello, everybody. How's it going, man? Are you from Orlando, like, proper? That's where I started comedy. I'm from originally Miramar, Florida, which is near-ish Miami, and then I moved to oh, Cooper City, okay. which is near-ish to Fort Lauderdale. Okay, right on. I don't know if I know anybody who's like Orlando proper. I feel like that's got to almost be the same effect of being from Las Vegas, where it's like, no, I don't fucking go to Disney World every day. <laughs> I mean, I tried to when I was in college. I Did you? I, is, that, is that part of the culture in UCF? Uh, <laughs> No, no, the culture is uh, drinking STDs, but I'm a very <laughs> good Christian Jewish boy, and oh, okay, sure. when I went to, I didn't like to drink, so my friends and I, we got ourselves uh, year passes, and every weekend, it's like, oh, we're going to alternate between Universal and Disney. <laughs> and you did? I sure did. Damn. And good times were had. They call that an Orlando speedball. Yeah. It's doing both at the same time. Uh, the same day, that'd be <laughs> fucking intense. <laughs> you know. Uh, tweet at us. There's yeah. some maniac out there who's done it. Someone yeah. who's trying to cram a whole family vacation into like a 24-hour period. They might be dead right now. That's true. Yeah, yeah. They did the Hulk too many times and a uh -huh. bubble formed in their brain. Too much adrenaline <laughs> for one day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm lucky I did that, though, just because I got very bored of Disney within that first year. Because I feel like if I didn't go as often, then I would become like one of those adult Disney people. Who oh, just... sure, sure. You have to purge. You got to purge the Disney out. Yeah. yeah, so I just smoked the whole pack that first year, essentially. Right. There are adults that will go like on the weekday they'll get the pass and then on the like weekday after work they'll just be like yeah i'll just go to disneyland oh, for a yeah. couple hours Fr friends slash former guests of the show monica scott and uh emily Fay both had passes in like 2018 when they were both living here to universal and would therapeutically go to harry potter world so oh. if they were both having a shitty day they'd text each other and be like yeah fuck it let's go let's go <laughs> let's go to harry potter i would riff and make fun but when i first moved out to la i also got myself a year pass to universal hey you know only because my friend and I went just be like, oh, what's the difference between this and the Florida one? And they said, hey, for answer five dollars, you can get a year pass. Yeah, yeah. I said, well, I would be an idiot not to do that. You might as well. Yeah, that's funny. Your description of getting all your Disney out of the way is sort of what I did with drinking. I did it all sophomore <laughs> year, just crammed it all in there. And I will say Universal Studios circa 2009 was amazing because they had a year-long haunted house attraction that nobody liked, oh. but I loved it. So you just, so just walked through it repeatedly. I feel like I did Get that. all scared in the middle of the summer. <laughs> oh, it's it all was hot out and you're just scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's the best when you go through four times in a row and the same stare actors keep seeing you and uh -huh. they just don't have the same gusto from the first time that they do through the fourth uh -huh. time. <laughs> I wanted to uh, start today, by the way, by uh, talking about a, a, a landmark in my life, which was uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, Sam was feeling a bit under the weather. and I COVID. Yeah. I, I didn't want to disclose any, uh, any COVID. Any, yeah. Samuel had the vid vid and I, you know, I texted him. I was like, Hey man, if you need anything, hit me up. And mm -hmm. Sam wanted me to get him some marijuana. Mm -hmm. Can I talk about this? Yes. Okay. I mean, you're the one who did the illegal. Uh, yeah. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, everybody major milestone in my life. I bought marijuana for the first time ever at uh, at the weed store at the from the weed store from the even. weed store. Can you believe that, Nat? <laughs> and <laughs> and I was nervous, yeah, <laughs> but not because I thought there were going to be like cops involved. I was nervous that they would they would think I was like not like that I was a cop or yes. like not cool. Yeah, I was gonna know? I was gonna ask. Did they? How soon did they tell you don't smoke weed at all? I so instantly. Well, so here's the thing. <laughs> I, I'm actually going to talk about two milestones. In your case, Sam was nice enough to call the order in ahead of time, so there was no guesswork. I just kind of showed up. I knew it. I I didn't want to do that too, because <laughs> when you go to a dispensary, do you smoke weed? I don't, and so it, I relate it, to you. But I also want to yeah. just be cool on this side no, of the no. table. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah, because I agree, it's a problem. There's too many things, and there's like too many options, and the employees don't give a fuck. 
There's like so many options if you were to ask or something, they'd just be like, I don't, ah, we have this other thing that's right in front of us and you'll love it. This yeah. is exactly what you're looking for. You know how you just told me this is it. it <laughs> sell you anything, you know? And I don't want to go give Rivers like the name of something and go in there yeah. and have him, you know. It, oh. Yeah, I didn't want you to have to deal no. with that. No, and I appreciate that. And I and, and definitely when I tell you the next thing, uh, uh, oh, you should have given him even more. You should have given him a made up straight and just have him go in there. And be like, uh, yeah, can I please have the uh, Jews did 9-11? Is that a strain? <laughs> my, I, my friend loves it, please. Can I have the honey boo-boo-boo? <laughs> they probably Times do two? have that, though. <laughs> the conspiracy weed shop guy. I hate that they're like, there's a market for that. Mm-hmm. Just like oh, yeah. right-wing shitbag conspiracy weed store. Ooh. That was like, that, you have to go to Nevada for that. <laughs> yeah. You can buy a bong that's just a hollow moon. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. You can buy a bong with anything. Uh, yeah, I'm snorting coke off of a flat earth table. <laughs> Ooh, man. I'm t- Sounds fun, t- actually. We're going to cut this part of the pod. This is such a, too good of an idea. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I got in there, and uh, you know, I was like, uh, there. I was like, I got a pickup for Rivers Langley. It's it's me. And uh, you know, just showed him the thing, and they handed it to me, and I was like, Okay, so you just did it through the security window. You didn't even go. Inside. No, I went in the store because okay. uh, you can do the transaction. I, through I the think security I tried window. that. I was like, I got to pick up, and he's uh-huh. like, Oh, you just go around. Uh-huh. So the order had been placed, so it wasn't a big deal. So that was that was salmon. Thank you. Thank One, no, thank you. Oh, no problem, no problem. One week later, our friend uh, Josephus Reigns contracted uh the vid as well uh again again and <laughs> back again for the first time he loves to catch covid Feels like the first <laughs> he's time. an earlier adapter he's of COVID. An, he was the first i knew <laughs> yeah. like we're talking february 2020 and now he's got it again <laughs> yeah or i guess he's fine now. he's fine now everybody you know he's he's fine now but uh joe uh hit me up and was like hey can you go get me some weed <laughs> And I was like, well, now I'm a goddamn, I'm an expert. Yeah, exactly. Uh, You're a regular mule. Yeah, I'm a mule. And so instead of <laughs> instead of doing what Sam did and making it easy and calling the order ahead of time, I was like, okay, what do you want me to do? And he's like, oh, go to Smartweed, which is <laughs> across the street from the Chick-fil-A on Western. And he's like, go to Smartweed and get $60 worth of the highest possible concentrate of THC for smoking bud flower, uh, uh-huh. whatever bud flower, bud flower, go to the bud flower the, the section bud flower. And well, <laughs> Valentine's day did just pass. Uh-huh. Oh <laughs> so, my God. I got so many notifications and texts from fucking weed companies. Oh, for Valentine's day. <laughs> the thing you smoke is called flower. So yeah. it's like, Hey, don't forget to get the flower along with your flowers. Like, Oh my God. <laughs> Why do you fucking like puns? Hey, we saw your weed. We saw your mom died. Maybe you yeah. saw, flowers for the grave <laughs> um like yo valentine's day you're also the lonely loser who smokes pot all day by yourself you're gonna need some weed to forget about how no one loves you on valentine's day uh so i get into smart weed and and joe was like just go they have all the jars so just walk around to all the jars and it says how much thc is in them so find the one with the most so this is now like a boring video game where i have I, to find the correct jar i don't i don't want to interrupt you no. really but this will be quick i bet if he would have gone to the website he could have just told you exactly oh, which one I, uh, of, this, <laughs> of this i have no doubt but. Uh, every weed w- place has a website now because you can pre-order because of the covid thing right right every single one does it yeah no I'm, I'm sure it does i just i was like you know what the guy's got covid i'm not uh-huh. gonna well, you know i'm just gonna go do the thing but this one was way more awkward because because I, first of all, I had to like look at all the the jars of of the pot, and I found one called Wakanda <laughs> that had okay. all right thirty six percent. Whoa, the thirty six percent. And I don't, is that? I mean, that seems is that that seems crazy, right? That, that seems, seems like, like a lie. That seems like it's not a plant anymore. It's just a, a fucking ball of candle wax. I feel like a lot of places definitely uh, exaggerate their percentages. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And because was it printed? It, it depends on where. It was printed because there's a certain label that's legally it has to be printed but if the weed shop is like did you have to pay tax for this weed 
I or what did you pay I the don't. price it said on the jar? Oh, see, I don't. Or this is what I'm getting to. I don't know anything, yeah. so I just see the Wakanda. the The label appeared to be just a printed off like letter label on yeah. there. It says yes. Wakanda explains what the strain is, and then 36, uh-huh. percent and that was the highest percentage I found. So I was like, all right, I want this one now. What I don't know at this time is that the weed is already in the jars, ready to go. Uh-huh. It's pre-packaged and it has a set price for each jar. That's uh, right. That's how shopping works. Yeah. Wait. Well, no, but that's not because here's the thing. Did you I think it was like a candy store where you just like I the dispenser. thought it was like a butcher where you're like, I need a pound of salami, and they cut out and they so, cut it off the plant like, in front I, of you. I didn't know. Well, because listen, like I didn't, I haven't bought weed, that's but true. I am. I was friends with I a guy who dealt weed in college, and he had the little scales that uh-huh. you got from the post office to weigh postage, and someone would be like. I need this much weed, and he would put yeah. a little on the scale until it weighed that. That's completely illegal in California. If you ever go to a weed shop where that's happening, that is not illegal. <laughs> <weed shop. laughs> yeah, see, this is not, I should have consulted with Sam, but this is not information I had. So I literally walked up to the guy and I was like, uh, yes, I would like $60 of Wakanda. <laughs> and they were like, it's 55 And I was like, yes. Uh-huh. Yes, <laughs> just to keep it moving, because I was like, I'm not, I'm not asking questions. I don't want to think You're I'm like, a cop. This guy's high as fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> just what very... planet is he on? <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> I want that. So they hand me the weed as I'm going to leave. This particular weed shop, presumably when he passed, uh, decided to make a a Kobe Bryant memorial weed. Uh huh. And the weed had, of course, purple and yellow hairs coming off of it. There <laughs> so it is. Beautiful. Lakers colors. He would have loved that. Kobe, he that's how you Kobe become. And Gianna would have loved that. <laughs> that, is, that is how you become the signature athlete that Kobe became, as to mm-hmm. uh, smoke a bunch of this stuff. But they had a poster for it where it has like Kobe's face and then the weed up close. And while I'm trying to get, you know, my Wakanda, there's this woman who walks up to the but she walks up to the counter and she does not speak any English, but she just keeps pointing at this poster and going, Kobe weed, Kobe weed, Kobe weed <laughs> like this. And the guy just kept being like, what? Because like every, if for people that are listening that don't live in LA, every goddamn store in the city painted a mural of Kobe Bryant at some point on it. And they had one behind the store. And the guy thought that she was asking about the mural. He's like, Oh, you want to know who painted it? And she's like, Kobe weed. And she's pointing at a poster that this guy can't see. Oh. <laughs> and so I'm like, she's talking about the weed there. And uh, Bro, final- she's talking about the weed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell the cops, man. She's talking about the bud, dude. The bud flowers. Uh, and so finally, he figured out like what she was saying and then yeah. was trying to communicate that they had just had a spe- like a it was just the poster the weed is gone that's a, another thing about weed shops is they'll advertise products they do not care <laughs> yeah, <at yeah>, <laughs> yeah but there's no way to explain this to this person so as i'm leaving just fading out is just kobe weed kobe weed kobe like weed. she's still just saying it so just point yeah. it to the menu yeah like, give me the shit that made kobe bryant score 80 yeah you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah the shit with the lakers <laughs> colored hairs coming off of it uh it's so, anyway i uh I told my mom, by the way, that I bought some weed. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. She called me and she's like, so what's new? I was like, what's new? Well, I got to tell you. <laughs> I bought marijuana for the first time. How did well, she yeah. take it? Twice. She thought it was funny. I told her about the Kobe weed. She was like, yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> How would she have felt if you smoked weed? At this point, I don't think, you yeah. know, I don't think it would have been that big a deal. I think it's legal out here. So that, that takes away a lot of the things. So yeah. Parents worrying like you'll get in trouble. For yeah, smoking yeah, weed. exactly. Also, I have to say, I've never met someone who doesn't smoke weed that has so many guitars hanging on their walls oh, right now. Oh, true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And a banjo and a mandolin. Um, <laughs> yeah. I got it all. Yeah, why don't you smoke? Because I don't smoke and I don't really have a good reason. I'm always curious of other people's. I mean, uh, you know, when Rivers I... Rivers gets a case of the panic. I do, I do. Oh. So I didn't used to. The first time I smoked weed, I was, uh, I think, 13 maybe. And uh, it was cool. Loved it. Then kept doing it. It was cool. And then when I was about 16 years old, one time I uh, smoked weed and it turned on me. <laughs> and I had a fucking you crazy the Kobe weed. I smoked the Kobe it was weed. A big, <laughs> yeah, it was a big mistake. <laughs> now, I think it was the opposite problem. I think the Kobe weed would have been better. This was uh, probably some fucked up brick weed that had you know PCP dripped yeah, on it or some sprayed shit. with raid to get it through the border. Uh, yeah, I had I had not a good time, and then 
every subsequent time I attempted to smoke, it was just, it was crazier and crazier. And then it all culminated yeah. at Bonnaroo 2004 when I missed a, uh, there's a band from Japan that was playing there uh, called Electric Eel Shock. They fucking rule and they never play America. And then I got too high and kind of had to freak out in my tent for a little bit. And I was like, I'm good. Fair enough. Yeah. That's I've, why. I've never actually done it. I'm interested in doing it at some point. You've never smoked weed. Ooh. Never smoked weed. I okay. come from a long line of very lame people. Like, <laughs> you could like, break the cycle. Yeah. I, will, here's, I love my mother. She's very sweet. She's on CBD oil now, which uh-huh. is very risque for her. She's kind of nervous about it. She doesn't know how legal it is. I'm like, Mom, you can buy this anywhere in mm-hmm. Florida. It's fine. Yeah. She came out here to visit, and she's like, oh, I need to get some CBD oil. So we go to a weed shop. She gets it. She goes, Nat, Nat I can't take this. I'm like, why? She's like, there's, there's THC in here. I'm just like... <laughs> it's it's very little mom you Ron, feel Ron it. DeSantis isn't coming here to get you mother yeah. it's fine she seemed like she was very close to saying that you don't understand this is marijuana juice <laughs> <laughs> like you know what CBD is man <laughs> do you know where that comes from <laughs> yeah also I'm just not a smoker in general mm-hmm. so I decided I will get high at some point but the way I'll probably do it is the same way I got drunk so I've been drunk one time in my life as well you made alcohol gummy bears no I'm kidding <laughs> I did have jello Gel- shots yeah. one Jello, Jello shots. shots, yeah. I did have this one. I remember one time at a party, someone as a joke brought a big thing to smear it off ice, and I was like, ha, ha, ha. And I was like, jokes on you, that's delicious. That's the only thing I will drink. <laughs> <laughs> have you fucked with any seltzers? Hard seltzers? I can take three sips. I'll have a feeling of, oh my God, this is delicious. I can actually be sociable at a party and uh-huh. not a weirdo. And I'm like, ooh, I taste the alcohol. I don't like this anymore. Oh, man. Yeah. They they had a uh, Bud Light flannel pack for the fall. Uh, What's where, that mean? I don't know what they, that means either. It was, a fl- it was called the flannel variety pack of Bud Light seltzers, and they had, uh, it was like toasted marshmallow, pumpkin spice, like all these fucking fall flavors. I, I didn't get a chance to uh, to try it, but my friend sent me that picture, so I was like... So oh. when you're white trash, but also a basic bitch. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, those... Hey, we... We're, we're from where we're from. Those those people exist. <laughs> I mean, I'm from those. My wife refuses to go to Red Lobster with me. So once a year, I reach out to my comedy friends. I was going to say, yeah, like you. I was there. Yeah, I got the, I got, <laughs> what did I drink? <laughs> I got the biggest, dumbest pina colada thing you could get. And it was a treat. Yeah, you got to. You got to. Who got the, was it Jeff May that got the fucking lobster pizza? Yes, it was. That is always a, that's a mirage. It's a mirage. Yes. <laughs> Don't go for it. It's, it looks so good on the menu. It's essentially <laughs> just non-kosher matzo is what they're giving you <laughs> well speaking of uh imbibing speaking oh. of not kosher oh yeah very, yeah no this is not not only is this against yahweh this is against buddha krishna pick your deity no one no one wants this this is i was so i've been looking forward to this all day so uh yeah our uh, concoction for today i found this at uh shout out to uh, the sherman way exit of the 134 they got a great uh, overpriced gas but hell of a selection in that chevron plus a cilantro Mexican grill, which is quite tasty. Oh, yeah. So today, uh, I found this there. This is uh, C4, which is a brand that we've uh, we've sampled in the past, but this particular C4... Skittles. Skittles flavored. <laughs> wow, and it's the true cross-brand. Yeah. This, oh, my God. This ain't that fucking bang shit where they call it purple Kittles, and you're just supposed <laughs> to get it. No, no, no. This is original Skittles, trademarked, registered, and they also had a a starburst one that was uh, uh, i think they had a cherry one and a strawberry one is so. this owned by the same company as skittles i think or they're just they contract this out that's that's what they I just burst through the forbidden door right <laughs> into the world of kidney yeah, damage or did, yeah or did skittles smarten up and be like oh we could have these guys addicted to sugar and taurine whatever <laughs> yeah, the fuck yeah. Is in here. <laughs> yeah no this is uh i think skittles just licensed their uh, their name and their flavor to of course this company Carno sin. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds deadly. I know. That's what you die of when you inhale asbestos or something. Yeah, or just, just, you know, what what you go to hell for if you're a Puritan. Mm-hmm. These were carno sins. You must wear the scarlet A. Uh, yeah, so I'll, let's. I'm uh, also very excited about this because when you said cilantro, I immediately thought you were going to say a cilantro flavored energy drink. No, that's the name of the Mexican restaurant that's in yeah, the yeah, gas yeah. station. Yeah. And I've got that brain thing that it makes it taste like soap to me. So I'm just sure, like, sure. I, will, I will drink this for the bit. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. but I'm not going to enjoy it as much. Now I, I feel uh, like this isn't an enjoyable segment. No, most of the time. <laughs> most of the time, I uh, I got to say I'm I'm ready to be heartbroken here because I I want this to be fucking good. But also, there's no way it can be. I also want to point out liquid. I also no. want to point out that Skittles is multiple flavors. So yes, what flavor yeah. is this going to be? This is what I'm gonna I'm gonna guess. I think because they didn't specify because with the Starburst they specified it said strawberry Starburst cherry Starburst. This says original Skittles. So my prediction is that they are trying to approximate those kids like me who can't handle having candy around and just take the whole fucking handful and just go for it. Yeah, yeah this is the equivalent of be like, yeah, we got a meat flavored one. What type of meat? Meat. meat. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we're gonna make a bag of Halloween in your mouth. Here we go. <laughs> it's gonna taste like blood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is everybody's favorite part of the show. Please hold. Okay. <laughs> Delicious. I'm guessing it's just going to be like a twangy fruit punch sort of deal. Because a lot of these are fruit punch flavored, like energy drinks in general. I also want to point out that this is clearer than my piss has ever been in my life. Oh, I yeah. don't understand how you can it get is. any flavor. Don't into worry, something. This, it'll it'll it rupture is. your kidneys. So your piss. I will can be. confirm it is clearer than his piss. Yeah, my my piss will be red after this. Ooh, I reckon. I gotta say, it, it smells like fruit punch. It smells like fucking Skittles. Is what it smells like. Mmm. Okay. Here we go. It doesn't really taste like much. Maybe I have COVID again, but. It has a it has a candy aftertaste it, on the initial on the initial entry. I gotta it's say much. it's it's a pretty good approximation of what I was saying. It tastes kind of like a handful of Skittles. It, it tastes like the shell of the Skittles, but not the insides. <laughs> no guts. No. Yeah, <laughs> it's not good. I'm gonna say. I mean, are energy drinks ever good, though? Yes. The thing about this, as I've <laughs> learned, some are better than others. Yeah, yeah. You grade good, on the curve. Is, good is, you know, subjective. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> They're like killers. It's yeah. like, you shouldn't kill, but who'd you kill and why? Because there <laughs> is different levels of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is a justifiable homicide. <laughs> yes. That is a good way of ranking these. <laughs> According this, to crimes. Yes, this is a... This is, uh, New Jack level justifiable homicide That's in right. the course of bounty hunting. Mm-hmm. There, I just want to point out there is a rewards program for C4. Oh, I dude. swear to God, I thought you were about to say there's a reward for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, like they put bounties on the side. Like, yeah. hope you're enjoying your Skittles. By the way, if you see Brian Christopher <laughs> Jones, he is wanted in Pinellas County. <laughs> Apparently, if you go to C4rewards.com, <laughs> Well, you can join uh, and earn ten dollar credit oh. today. Well, I have a phone with internet access. Let us, oh, oh. yeah, we do. C4 Hit up the rewards. good folks at Carnosin, <laughs> and there's zero sugar, which is what? probably the best part. What you does know? Carnosin make aside from that? It is. It's got to be explosives, right? Because it's called C4. Uh, something with. I bet it's a from Dupont, so they make paint. What? Yeah. Beta Power's trademark of DuPont and is used under license of Nutribolt. <laughs> that might be that might be the Skittles rainbow. So I think we're drinking paint thinner. <laughs> yeah, it's acetone. Or oh. something. C4 rewards.com. So I tried going to the dot com and it sent me to some weird <laughs> rewards program that looked like a Christian website. Yeah, I mean, it <laughs> wouldn't be surprised if this was a scam coupon trying to get all your fucking <laughs> info for money. Oh, man. Are we drinking an energy drink of the Lord right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Carnosin. This patented form of beta alamine has been clinically shown to fight fatigue this and improve sucks. the muscular endurance within minutes of drinking. Drinking C4, you may feel a tingling sensation from it, the beta alamine. It, it tastes like the face you're making right now. It really does. Well, just the last <laughs> time I was told I would feel a tingling sensation from a beta, it was uh, <laughs> when someone tried to finger me in an open mic. So <laughs> uh, it says uh, that that the tingling sensation that is uh, signaling that your body is primed for superhuman performance. <laughs> oh, this is one of those boner ones. There's <laughs> oh. some of these some of these energy oh. drinks are marketed as like boner pills basically. Wow. Oh, wow. The stamina and enhancement <laughs> and all that shit. It'll say that on the can. And then later you're like, "Damn, why can I have sex four times in a row tonight?" And you're like, "Oh, I drank that G fuel earlier." <laughs> uh, yeah. Head bull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you dingies. I don't know. I, I lost the plot on that. I had the Carno sin, and now I'm ready to go. Uh, <laughs> I just drank it. 
because I felt like I was obligated to. Mm-hmm. But I do not like the flavor of that. It also has a weird thickness to it, which it I'm does, yeah. not a fan of. You know how like, when you drink something that's like aloe flavored, it's not that weird kind of Je- sudsiness? floaty uh, slimes in there? Yeah, it's a little jelly is it what is, it is. Yeah. Uh, it's jellish. I got to say, I don't mind it. I would... I don't know if I'd get it again, but uh, I'm definitely not. Uh, definitely. If that's the only, you know, if it's that or falling asleep behind the wheel. <laughs> well, I mean, if you, if the bar is compared <laughs> Life to nothing, or death. Yeah. Then, then, sure. <laughs> compared yeah. to nothing. Yeah. I think I would choose this <laughs> in a life or death situation. I would drink it again. I take back <laughs> what I said. <laughs> By the way, shout out to our friend Paul in the UK. Keeping track of all of the energy uh, drink consumption on this year's show. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to be in the uh, in the minority here, but I, I'm going to go like four out of five stars. I kind of like that. Uh, I'm going one out of five. One. One. That one? seems very aggressive. Ooh. No. What do, what do no, we got? It's not. We got we to gotta take the average here. What are you saying, Nat? A good buddy of mine from Florida has cases and cases of energy drinks, and they're um, all... I feel like they all taste the same to me for the most You're part. You're talking about like the stock Red Bull flavor, like the yeah, yeah, the yeah, whatever that, that is supposed to approximate, which I don't. Yeah, I that don't really fruity know. engine oil like <laughs> aftertaste. Yes, yeah, yes. Awful. And I would say that this breaks out slightly from that pack. Uh-huh. So, based solely on just other energy drinks, I would give this maybe like a three and a half to a four out of five. Ooh, wow. All right. But as far as drink drinks go, that's uh, I would even give it a two as far as drink drinks go. Okay. Wow. So your one out of five is see, I would almost I think we're it seems like it's a three then. I think I would rather have the Red Bull tasting one, honestly. Because mm. sometimes when they go away from the Red Bull, it's good, but sometimes they miss. Yeah. They went away from it and to me they missed. It's kind of thick, like you said. Zero sugar, so it's not the it's a weird kind of sweet, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah and true. then they add in some of the sour powder to try to like <laughs> emulate the yellow and orange Skittles, you know? Uh and uh, I just it doesn't come together. It, and I think the initial problem is you, I didn't taste it for a second. Yeah. When I first poured it in my mouth, I was like, it kind of just is like almost nothing, like a like a watered down sprite remix. Oh yeah. But sure. then it hit me. And coated my tongue with a terrible taste. <laughs> and so now I, it's a one out of five. To mm, me. All right. I mean, well, I could have gave it a zero, but it's not that bad. No, no. I'm, uh, you know, like I said, probably not going to revisit, but, uh, you know, any port in a storm. You know we'll see how hard my dick gets laid. Yes, that's the that's, that's the, the be the test. Yeah, how long is this podcast gonna be? Let's, <laughs> let's, let's have it. We'll see what we think after we all fuck. Um, <laughs> So I uh, I wanted to cover this story because sometimes in this life you read about someone who is such a villain that you can't help but kind of stand in awe. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So this is from uh, Chadbourne, North Carolina. Okay. Um, <laughs> so this is where is... dreams come true. <laughs> I've heard <laughs> Chadbourne, and this is from their uh, the news station WECT. Chadbourne. It's a small town of 2,000 people located in the southeast corner of North Carolina, about an hour west of Wilmington, and it's located along the Andrew Jackson Highway in between a town called Whiteville and a town <laughs> called Cerro Gordo, which okay. means Fat Hill in Spanish. So, okay. already great. We live in between Fat Hill and Whiteville. If Walmart was a geographical <laughs> location. I don't even that. This is a Dollar General town, buddy. <laughs> uh, so, the former police chief of the town is 36-year-old William Anthony Spivey. He's the former police chief because he's currently awaiting trial on more than 80 felony charges after he was arrested and forced to resign in April of 2021. Uh, so uh, what did he do? Well, he was first arrested by the State Bureau of Investigation and was charged with 73 offenses. So it should be noted, this guy, he took office in July of 2018 and all of the things that he was charged with started in August of 2018. <laughs> so he was the chief of police for less than a month before he was just like... Fuck it, I'm going to do crimes. And, <laughs> and that's, uh, you know, I kind of like that. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, fuck it. I'm a, I'm a, look, I live between Fat Hill and Whiteville. <laughs> look, I'm just saying, I used to work at a movie theater. We had some chicken tenders from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> we drank the icy. You let your friend That's in. That's true. The, the thing is, I, I think, is even at the movie theater, you work there for at least like two months before you're like, okay, I feel like I know how to steal <laughs> and I'm comfortable enough in doing it. I will give you that because there were the people who would get fired with in the first week because uh. they're on camera stealing rolls of toilet paper which by the way this was like a decade and a half before covid so uh, they had some foresight dude. that was my, quite impressive uh, my uncle my my mother's brother got arrested for stealing toilet paper from the war eagle supper club in auburn alabama in the 60s and it was just like damn he must have been stealing a lot well no it the was the dumbest it's the dumbest thing he had a friend in there who was throwing the toilet paper out the window to you know him on the other side and just happenstance a cop like pulled around the building to turn around and just sees a bunch of idiots throwing toilet paper out the window it was like what the fuck so you know it happens to the best of us uh he he or cops do good things sometimes yeah yeah they stop uh <laughs> toilet paper thievery <laughs> yeah. from alabama in the 60s yeah so uh, clearly the worst thing happening in alabama yeah. in the 60s well, to be fair, that they needed to stop that's probably right. the best thing a cop could be doing in <laughs> yeah, that's true. it was stopping him from brutalizing uh yeah. people of different uh, races uh so august is when these all these crimes occurred from august of 2018 until march 4th of 2021 so that's the range of the crimes and here's here's what he's charged with 31 felony counts to alter steal or destroy evidence 31 felony counts of embezzlement uh four felony counts of trafficking opiates by possession four ca- felony counts of trafficking opiates by transportation two counts of obtaining controlled substances one count of obtaining controlled substances by fraud so the arrest warrant show that spivey is accused at minimum of stealing the following from the Chadbourne Police Department's evidence room. 367 doses of Xanax. Damn. <laughs> See, this is why he did it so early. He's a fucking bar head. He's just going into work all fucking on pills. Yep. Uh, Time to be a police officer today. <laughs> Crashing his car in the parking lot. I, I have a thought. I just need you to finish before I say what I'm going to say. So please continue. <laughs> so, yeah, all the Xanax, 47 doses of methadone, uh, three doses of suboxone 1.1 grams of cocaine one dose of hydrocodone 131 doses of percocets 26.5 oxycodone and i'm like do you break one in half i just love that that. you're in the store reading the weed labels and he's just like (laughs) full arm off the shelves into a big bag you see that jar of pills put it in my mouth it it says (laughs) something about this area that it's all pills and there's one gram of blow yes in all of this yep there's just like a million pills and like a (laughs) tiny baggie of coke we got off one guy <laughs> There's one guy in town who does coke. Uh, three doses of MDMA, two clonopin pills, three bu- buprenorphine, which I, I had to look that up. That is like an opiate. It's like a strip that you put. On, it's like a patch, like wow. a fent patch, basically. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know they made fent patches. They, they do. do yeah, yeah, they make fent lollipops. That mm-hmm. was one of my favorite episodes of Intervention. Really? Yeah, there was this lady. She, <laughs> she's really addicted. It's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she was so into Fent lollipops that she thought her muscles were uh, like expanding I mean, here's out the- like from her joints and stuff. So she would just lay. This is a crazy uh, episode of Intervention. She would lay on the ground with her legs up and she would be like, I have to get my knees back in place because my muscles are pushing them out of place. I'm just <laughs> I feel like I have big. Yeah, Nat died overdosing on the lollipop energy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 10 doses of amphetamines, 11 white pills stamped L484, which I've, it's funny that I was able to figure out what that was. Those are just those big ass Tylenols they give you. <laughs> it's like they tried to make it seem like, oh, isn't it fucked up? It's like, I think we can let him slide with stealing Motrin. That's also funny that it's because it is a, such a large dose. It's prescribed. You can get in trouble for having that yeah. much Tylenol yeah. in one pill. Yep, a pill bottle containing unknown prescription pills, and then uh, the last thing it just says eighteen green pills in quotation marks. So well, like, all that's hilarious <laughs> until you figure out the people in charge of evidence and people's lives can't even figure out what a fucking pill is. Yeah, they work yes. for the fucking government. Yeah, I just googled pill L four eighty four, and it was like, <laughs> oh yeah, those are those big ass Tylenols they give you if you get your wisdom. You got the out. green ones. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the green ones are on the street once again. Yeah, the blue pill. 
You wake up, think it was a dream. The red pill, you learn the truth. The green pill, make your dick rock hard. <laughs> All night. Better than C4. I, I swear to say, God, man. Green pill, pure carno sin. Um, <laughs> So when you started listing off all of the charges for the cops, every time I see a new story of like, oh, police are getting busted, it's always they coerce someone into sucking their dick or some sort of like yeah. form of horrible, brutal sexual assault. Exactly. To hear that, it's like, oh, it's just all drug shit. He's okay in my book. <laughs> that's what I was saying. I was like, this is like, well, I, we have, I, I'm not all the way uh, done Okay. Yet. Um, <laughs> See, that's why I didn't want to like, be like, this sounds like an okay bloke. Oh, he also like murdered and buried like six children. It's like, uh, I mean... Consider how many drugs he was on. It's bound to happen. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he also stole uh, $32,186.51 in cash. Uh, he also definitely stole at least five guns that they know about, uh, <laughs> including. How hand- do they not keep track of the guns? <laughs> well, there's some that are just missing, and they're like, he, it's either in his house somewhere or he sold or them. Or another cop stole them. Uh, yes. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's, that's, that is actually part of it. Uh, so and that includes handguns and rifles. According to the DA, there's also a quote unquote large number of guns that are unaccounted for that he is also suspected of stealing and selling. So he is also accused of providing a false police report to a family nurse practitioner on May 4th, 2020, that claimed that a 90 count oxycodone prescription that he had filled five days prior had been stolen. So he uh, he got his regular oxy script and was like, I don't know, I, I lost it. I'm going to need another one. <laughs> Spivey then obtained a new 75 count prescription of oxycodone, according to warrants. And I'm like, how are people still falling for this shit? That was oh, that was my God. first thing is like, how are doctors still just like, oh, yeah, I lost my oxycodone. I need more. I mean, I well, guess if you're a <laughs> if you're a cop, it's the number one thing people would never suspect of you as <laughs> being true. a fucking oxycodone. Yeah, addict, oh, but, that's true. Yeah. Well, I mean, but also the fact that he probably crawled to the counter probably gave it away. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, if you're fucking losing your Oxycontin, saying you lost it after five days, you've popped so many Oxycontin in that five days. <laughs> There's no fucking way he wasn't a goddamn mess. And also, if he's popping this many pills, then hopefully he didn't have the energy to beat his wife. So again, yeah. okay in my book. Yeah, she just she, you know, raised a hand and she just kind of pushed him over. The DA said they became suspicious of Spivey when the town's police department had, quote, neglected to send any narcotics for criminal analysis to the state crime lab for (laughs) for a substantial period of time so it's like he didn't even cover his own ass here like so when they tried to audit the evidence room spivey at first said that he didn't have a key he's the chief of police he's like i don't got a key to that door they don't let me have that i lost that with my oxycontin (laughs) prescription (laughs) yeah it was it was in the pill bottle too and it got stolen logistical question did he get promoted from within this own department or come from another department oh chief i think he got promoted from within this is not Uh, a town with that many cops he's been been popping pills on the job forever which also how shitty do you feel if you were up for that job and he's the one who got it (laughs) over you and you're just like this fucking pill head is more qualified for this position than he just me, apparently. got it because he's fucking snorting pills with the mayor. This is bullshit. <laughs> so he said, tells him he doesn't have a key. Uh, and then he showed up to the follow up meeting an hour late with uh, none of the requested evidence. So, like, I just. <laughs> I Xanax just, dust under his nose. <laughs> yeah, I just. I love the scene when you're trapped in a corner, there's nowhere to go. And that's yes. this scene in the movie. Like, he's like, fuck. Fuck. Uh, so this is from <laughs> this is from the DA. Quote. Moreover, a review of what evidence he did bring gave my prosecutor serious concerns about the possibility that the evidence had been tampered with. <laughs> so he showed up with like a quarter of what he was supposed to show up with, and it was like you did some of this already. Like I also feel like it gave it away that he burped and it looked like LeBron <laughs> throwing chalk in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Excuse me, guys. Sometimes I just fall down in the middle of meetings. That's pretty <laughs> normal for me. Don't worry about that at all. I know uh, my, my ankles backwards, but I feel great. <laughs> uh, Spivey ultimately resigned as the chief of police on April 6, 2021. And then last summer, he was sitting in jail, unable to make his uh, half a million dollar bond. And that's when he was hit with more charges. In late July, it was revealed that Spivey had embezzled about $8,000 worth of money intended for a family of Philip Tanner Buffkin, a child with cancer. So now he's 
<laughs> so he's already like just stealing guns and drugs. He's just the worst. And then he's like, you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> I hope he at least left him at some like prescription pills under his pillow. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that child is now dead. And Spivey's <laughs> new charges include embezzlement, obstructing justice, larceny by an employee, felony larceny, and obtaining property by false pretenses. And one felony count of, come on, man. <laughs> and a partridge in a pear tree. Uh, oh. So he is now up to 110 felony charges and nine misdemeanor charges, and he was given an additional $300,000 unsecured bond for the new charges. Well, he's a cop, so he'll probably get off. Well, you know. Oh, that we're <laughs> we haven't even got to Christmas yet. Uh, <laughs> oh, so after another hearing in August, he negotiated back down to half a million, and he bonded out after a Nebbia hearing in Bladen County. So a Nebbia hearing is when a detainee must prove that the money he was using for his bond isn't from the money that he stole <laughs> point of order can we just go back and not gloss over the fact that he negotiated his bail back down yeah. to half a million <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Like, from <laughs> what leverage do you have in that case where it's like yeah we're gonna have to give you like it's a like a <laughs> million dollar bond uh counterpoint no please <laughs> I, I seriously it's like you stole from a cancer kid and you stole nine tons of drugs and guns uh yeah, what do you have to say for yourself we're co-workers that's what yeah, i have to say 100 percent. yeah he's I'll like buy you a drink <laughs> i guarantee you this motherfucker's like look judge we know what way the wind's blowing all right let me just walk around for a little bit yeah. <laughs> um, and hey maybe if uh you know you don't go my way maybe cynthia finds out what you were really doing last <laughs> easter huh? just put that out there <laughs> so he had to in order to bond out he had to prove that the money he was using to bond out wasn't from the sale of all the AK-47s and Xanax he was selling. So he got a legit bond company to get him out and the uh, half a million dollar bond comes with the condition of wearing a GPS monitor before the trial. So now he's got a he's on house arrest. He's on house arrest, but he's got a. It's not house arrest. He's, he's still just got to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is, but not uh, not at the police department. So last week in Subway <laughs> in Tabor City, which is about 14 miles south of Chadbourne, Anthony Spivey was arrested again <laughs> after he was caught stealing two catalytic converters from his new employer, M and M Automotive, over the Christmas holidays. So man. yeah, so uh, man, it's just uh, I guess they don't background check at that. <laughs> Automotive place. <laughs> <laughs> they don't pull up your pant leg to yeah. see the GPS monitor on your leg. <laughs> they don't have the have you been convicted or accused of a felony <laughs> on the job application. No, I haven't been convicted. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been accused of a felony. I've been accused of 110 felonies plus the one I'm about to do <laughs> unto thou. Uh, so, guys, my gal's back in jail. They let him out uh, in the summer and. Just couldn't do it. And then he's stealing catalytic converters. So that's a, a just a, a precipitous yeah. fall from... You give someone a uh, third hundred chance and they just completely <laughs> blow it. It makes you wonder, it makes me wonder, if uh, he was a drug head before he became a cop and he was like, you know, it'd be a good way to get drugs all the time to steal them off other drug heads. Yeah. You know, so he's like, I'm going to be a cop and do that. Or if one day he was just being a cop and he was wondering, like, why do all these drug heads do these drugs? <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe I'll try it on C. I got a, I just got a damn hooked ever since. I got a damn Shoney's breakfast buffet of pills <laughs> in the locker room. Let's mm -hmm. go. Uh, let's go give it a try. I mean, just to go back to my time working at a movie theater, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't the biggest chicken finger head, but I was like, well, these are free and plentiful, so yeah, I'd get, be a right. dummy not to. You get hungry at work. It's <sighs> like whatever. I'm not gonna leave and go buy something. Yeah. yeah. Fill up on popcorn and eat a couple tendies. And also, to be fair, <laughs> if you're living through 2020 and you have that much drugs at your disposal and you're not taking it, I question you. Mm. Yeah. I mean, what do you get all the power for? To be nice and not break the rules? No, yeah. not in America. Although not in this country, <laughs> I've never been a cop, but I've thank, watched, thank God. You know, if I was, I'd You've have barely been, bought weed. I was going to say <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have been laughed out of that weed store if I was. But I've seen a lot of movies, and I've, as far as I know, the the trick is you uh, take the drugs off the accused before registering it to the evidence locker. Mm -hmm. You uh, you fucking take the gram of cocaine off the guy and then say that you only found, you know, whatever, half a gram. At least fudge the numbers fudge on the paper. The numbers. You know? yeah. Or if it's already in there, do what I used to do with my roommates where I would steal their leftovers, but I would take like a little bite at yeah. a time. Yeah, and yeah. you just have to like Slowly. make it, you make it look like the same shape that it was left in, but like a little bit further <laughs> back in the container. Yeah, moving the You're peanut. a criminal genius. <laughs> yes. <laughs> moving the peanut butter 
butter around, so it looks like you haven't been stealing all the peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, like if they were to weigh it out, they'd realize like, hey, there's like one eighteenth less than there was before. But it's like you got to be a little smarter than that. Yeah, it's a like smarter. Maybe, maybe I just need one hundred and fifty as annex and not three hundred and sixty. What I'm saying is, I would be better at stealing drugs than this drug head. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Why is that not a TikTok challenge? The <laughs> steal it from the drug locker 2022 <laughs> big is, challenge. Pharmacy robbery challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend Josh Dixon at J underscore two underscore D underscore two J two D two sent this to us. Uh, this is uh, this is from the Independent. A little bit of religious talk here, uh, and I wanted to uh, play a clip because it's awesome. The Tennessee pastor, known for burning so-called witchcraft books like Harry Potter and Twilight, has threatened to expose six supposed witches. Wow, I watched this video. Today. I have not. Continue, please. <laughs> it was <laughs> both of you simultaneously on no, it's me. It's good. It's this jo- video is good. Josh sent me this while I was eating lunch, and it just it made it made my afternoon. It really did. Thank you so much, Josh. Uh, so. Pastor Greg Locke, who styles himself as a prophet for predicting that Donald Trump would beat, quote, demon-possessed Joe Biden, went on a wild sermon against these so-called witches that infiltrated his own congregation. So, hmm. I'm just saying, there's something wrong in the world and no one's thought about witches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Things were, every, everything was going good in the 1600s when we were burning witches, and I'm just saying, <laughs> it's been all downhill since. Well, they got all these crystals now, these witches. And they, that they do. And they yeah. pray to those, like a Christian god. I mean, I hear there's also a lot of crystal in the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> in Tennessee, especially. If if, if you watch this video, this guy could definitely be on some oxycodone. He does the most delightful jig. It's one of those things where he could have done stand-up comedy. Yeah. Oh, God. But yeah. You'll see what I'm talking Here about. Here we go. All right. I'm going to play in my mind. Guess what drugs he's on? We got first and last names of six witches that are in our church. And you know what's strange? Three of you are in this room right now. <laughs> Oh, wait, please pause, please pause, please pause. That jig he does. For everybody listening, I want you to know, Mm -hmm. when he did that, he put up one hand straight over his head, kicked one leg out, and then one leg hopped over while somehow tap-a-tap-a-tapping the microphone on the podium along the way, once with each hop of himself. (laughs) In a Dane Cook-level act-out I haven't seen (laughs) since my time in college. After after (laughs) riling up the entire church of being like, oh my god, there's witches in and three of them room. are here now <laughs> they're in the just room just looking around man. like who is it who is it yeah he also looks like the biggest cop i've ever seen in my entire life uh, oh, he's yeah. got the cop haircut with the gray on the temples and the, the like almost shitty, translucent gray goatee, goatee yeah. the evidence room swagger <laughs> they call it. <laughs> yeah and we'll put this on our uh, twitter so people can see it if you follow us uh, at the goods pod we'll uh, we'll throw this up there let's uh, let's continue three of you in the room right now <laughs> Wait, please pause one more time. You better look in my eyeballs. We ain't afraid of you, you stinking witch. Please pause again. Okay. (laughs) Three of you in the room right now. This is exciting, by the way. And I know as a wrestling fan, this is audience participation. Yes, You're bringing them to you. And here's the most, like, him saying... There are six witches in our congregation. Three of them are here right now. Yeah. I find that hard to believe because he said there are witches here and their reaction wasn't gasps. It wasn't booing yeah. or hissing. It was overwhelming applause, yeah, which yeah. makes me think that it's a room full of witches <laughs> <laughs> and they're happy that there's at least three legit ones. Like, is, is this a room full of Wiccans and he's just in the wrong <laughs> tent in Tennessee? <laughs> it, is also, a, it is a tent. He I also has say. a delightful pet. Coat. <laughs> yeah, what the, we, I thought at first it was like a uh, like a like a North Face like fleece thing, but it's like a very strange combo of like a like a Dickies jacket and also a dress suit, suit coat. Yeah, he looks like a detective. He's like if John Constantine wasn't angry with God. <laughs> uh, here we go. You devil worshiping Satanist witch! We cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. We break your spells. We break your curse. We got your first name. We. Got Got your last 
today. We even got an address for one of you. All right, please pause. Yes, now. please yes, pause. Yes, that's I, a threat. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're he's gonna this, <laughs> fictional witch. <laughs> you know, how you kill a witch. It's not uh, with a spike through the heart or no uh, shit like that. You dox them. You dox them. We're gonna swatch you when you're playing Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna interrupt your Twitch stream. We're gonna zoom bomb you. <laughs> I take your hex and raise you a dox. Uh, I also want to say that that last sentence he said he dropped into a karate kata horse stance <laughs> and he wiggled his head like prime era Steve Austin or D'Lo, D'Lo Brown. Brown. Yes, he did the D'Lo head He's wiggle. Aggressive. This because, man's yeah. aggressive. Because he wants the witches to know you looking at the real deal now. Yeah, well, the other thing I want to say is the thread he makes is like, we got your addresses too. It's a church. Just for one of them. It, yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. He's like, we have one of the addresses. It's like, theoretically, if this is a church, you should probably have everyone's address because you got to send out bulletins This and is shit. like a mega church. Yeah, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Because he says it's in a tent. Yeah, it is in a tent. Yeah. So it's probably a huge outdoor thing. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, come on, man. You should and have... Since this is a church, I know you ain't got my tax information because we don't pay none. <laughs> <laughs> we are fly by night and not in the witch way. <laughs> Oh, love the feedback. <laughs> you so much as cough wrong, and I'll expose you in front of everybody in this tent, you stinking witch. <laughs> Wait, pause. Pause, pause, please. You spell casting pharmakia devil worshiping mongrel, you. Pause, please. <laughs> what does pharmakia mean, first of all? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Second it's of all, it's an energy drink. Yeah, I it's, think. A, yeah it's what's in the C4. Yes. Second pharmakia. Of all, he said, if you cough wrong, we'll report you, making it the first time a southern church has had a problem with COVID. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, also, also, I, it's a threat that's like it's so stupid because why would you not just expose the witch yes and look like a genius you yeah. know also Got- he's talking a lot of big devil game for a man with uh three electric guitars behind him <laughs> why are you not using acoustic that is the lord's instrument <laughs> you're using the same instrument as that devil bob dylan <laughs> i think one of those that's a p bass i think an uh, electric p bass electric p bass i want to see a cello up there yeah 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 <laughs> and not a pluck i want a bow this is one of those you rocking. can't use your virgin fingers on those strings <laughs> <laughs> if i see you slapping your thumb on that bass <laughs> if you'll pop it in, i know your address. i will cast you out flea <laughs> <laughs> you were sent to this church to destroy us you were sent to this church to lure us in you were sent to this church to cast spell listen some of you been sick because you befriended that witch so <laughs> wait also i want you to know that when it ended the video the uh, pause screen was him mid jade looking like a human swastika yeah. that is the situation <laughs> he was in I saw, I saw a longer video that's about like a minute longer than oh that. god oh, i want to see this entire I was gonna say, where, he does a great thing where he goes one of the witches is brand new no one in here even knows her or something like that. And that's when the whole audience is like, they do gas. They're like, oh, I, I thought it was the woman I hated. I love, Apparently, no, it's a new woman who wants I, to kill us. I hope more than anything that there's some born again Christian who overcame addiction, found the Lord, and is trying to use it to better themselves. And they decided, I'm going to go to church for the first time <laughs> since I was young. I was angry because my family used it to push me away. But now I realize that was just their bad interpretation of it. I'm going to make religion whatever I want it to be. <laughs> I'm going to go, go in there. Mega church. And they're going to be like, hey, how was your first day back at church? They fucking called me a witch. (laughs) Well, they have witches there, so I'm not sure if I should go back. It seems very satanic. Did he ultimately call out the witches no you can't do that yeah also he you said he was burning harry potter books but he also had a crest on his jacket that looked very similar to a gryffindor one <laughs> mr Locke made news uh earlier this year for hosting a burning of books and movies don't okay, destroy yeah. physical media come on <laughs> that's, all, that's all we really have left once the internet goes down <laughs> so here, uh, he said harry potter twilight ouija boards tarot cards Healing crystals, idol statues, and spell books are 100% witchcraft. Adding that, and this is to us, guys, he said his haters can laugh all they want. I mean, yes, good. Thank Thank you. I will. But here's the thing. I appreciate that because he likes the fact that we're laughing at him, which... 
everyone could use a good laugh. This is true. I feel better now. I feel better now coming in. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's the uh, Skittles C4. That could finally be like, oh, that's, yeah. that, that's that tingling I'm feeling in me. It's either, the, the, Lord, it's either the Lord or it's a tumor growing. It's, it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> uh, he says, if you think we're crazy, then scroll on. We're exposing the kingdom of darkness for what it is, which, wow. why is there not a metal band called Kingdom of Darkness? I'm sure there is. That and I'm sure fucking rad. I'm sure you don't know because it's in the like tree root font that you can't read on every <laughs> metal flyer. <laughs> he says, it's time for people to be delivered and that's what he said before lighting a bunch of books on fire he has also been here we go one of the most outspoken propagators of QAnon. that's right uh he called uh joe biden a sex trafficking demon possessed mongrel who's part of a secret cabal that operates child trafficking tunnels beneath the white house well at least he's saying something i finally agree with now mm-hmm. yeah yeah i got you know i take it all back i take it back i i will say with the QAnon stuff it, it's easy to laugh at but my I don't believe any of it, but at the same time, <laughs> I have to say that very clearly before I defend human honors. But if the government is so shitty that someone online on 4chan can say, hey, they're all space lizards raping children, and <laughs> millions of people's reaction is, that does explain it, yeah, yeah. then maybe well, they that will. they're the ones that we need to be worried <laughs> yeah, about. They've lied about so many other things. This makes sense. Uh, yeah, they got to be space lizards. And this is my favorite. And, and I, I've been waiting for more of this. So I'm hoping that, you know, as we get closer to that next election, this, this snowball will start rolling down the hill. So he insists that Donald Trump is the illegitimate president, but he's had a falling out with him because of his support of vaccines. Oh, that's my favorite thing in the world. I can't, that has to come to a head eventually, right? Oh, it's happening. It's got to happen. And you know it's because Trump's a fucking coward, so he'll break the other way and go hard against it. But Oh, boy. I don't think he will. I don't think he will because Trump's not the type of guy who will admit that he was wrong. He will just dig his heels. He's already come out and called uh, Ron DeSantis and other governors cowards for not oh, admitting yeah. they got boosted. Uh, and I'm just like... It. Oh, I love it. This is the face turn I've been waiting for. This is this is the T Rex eating the Raptors at the end of Jurassic Park. Yes, I. Oh, my dream scenario for 2024 is that Ron DeSantis gets the Republican nod. Joe Biden dies. They skip over <laughs> Kamala Harris and give it to Trump. I want to give it to me. Uh, so in his latest sermon on Sunday, he said that two of the witches had infiltrated his congregation through his wife's ladies Bible study. Oh, so I love that he that's, threw that's, his wife oh, under the bus. I've women been saying, read books. yes. Look, oh. anytime them women's get together and start reading, <laughs> even if it's the Lord's words, even if it's the, that's, that's God's Harry Potter. That's what look, we're putting look, there. Look, that's the only real magic. Look, women have a vibration in their brains. And when they start humming together, witches <laughs> yeah what house are you i'm the house of jesus <laughs> the only real house uh he says slytherin that's the one that tricked you into eating apples <laughs> this is the end of the video where he says we got all six of the names all six of them so you get a choice you can either leave with your spells all by yourself or i'll show up next sunday so this is cutting a promo with the stage full of brooms and i'll give you one and i'll fly your tail up out of this place in the name of jesus all all right, straight up, I will go for the free broom. That sounds like a good deal. <laughs> now, I think he's saying he's going to like hit them with it. He says, I'll fly your tail up out of this place. So he's going to like. But you have to give them the broom so they can fly off with it, which to me sounds like <laughs> free broom. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right. So he just added in the your tail is just is superfluous. I mean, if okay. you want to hit me with it, fine. But I get to keep that. <laughs> That's though, what right? that I was going to say. Why would you give them their greatest weapon? It's in the yeah. broom. Is that a thing where witches can't control if they step over a broom? Room, they just start yeah. flying. <laughs> <laughs> they, the it's like the test, you know. <laughs> That's the old fairy tale. Don't put them in the room with a broom, or you find out. Too and they soon. go zoom, zoom, zoom. They'll go zoom. Watch out. And they need molested kids for their stews. <laughs> yeah. To poison the church. <laughs> yeah, I just I I gotta say. He is uh, an effective communicator because I can't wait for next Sunday. Oh, I can't I, wait till he has the brooms out. What is he going to do? He's going to go see how good I am at scaring away the witches. Give yeah. me more money. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, they're not here anymore. But now 
We've got goblins. That's right. Two of you are goblins. Man, fuck Disney Plus. I want this guy's streaming service. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it's available <laughs> for a price. <laughs> Everybody's got one of this. I have no doubt. But he's the last little uh, bit here. But we ain't playing your spell cast and witchcraft nonsense. Sage burning games. And on that, I agree. Sage smells nasty. Come on, guys. Uh, <laughs> Global Vision Bible Church did not respond to the independent's request for comment. What comments would they lead? He was very. <laughs> clear with everything <laughs> I, do you want to comment on your comments i, do. I said what i, I have said. some questions I about the witches sir <laughs> i have some questions about the brooms uh what you believe the relationships are to witches or brooms are you gonna bring in the hats it's like i got six of these these hats from halloween town that is very true what type of witches are we envisioning here are we going with like the halloween witches are we going with the Macbeth old hag it, type thing it seems like a little combo of both he's talking about like brooklyn crystal girls and halloween witches at the same time because he's got the broomsticks but he's also incorporating sage and crystals so not throw some astrology in there it's that is yeah. witchcraft according to good christians yeah that's true it really is i feel like he's like slow way <laughs> he's like slow rolling his way down and just call them basic bitches, witches. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have plenty of time to live, laugh, and love in hell. Uh, well, so we're so <laughs> desensitized to, to it because we live in L.A., but I guess there are places where if you're like, I like crystals, people are like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Are you serious? <laughs> oh, they're not going are further you fucking than serious? That. Like, I like Mumford and Sons. Be yeah. gone, devil. <laughs> One of the Mumford and Sons, I think, is like a QAnon guy now, actually. Delicious. I well, love their it. old he banjo can, player. He's welcome at that church. Then. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I don't respect a banjo player unless they're like a deep woods like conspiracy theorist. <laughs> <laughs> well, this fucker's from England. He doesn't get that cred. Oh, they've got him over there too. Uh, the one time I visited they've London, got uh, lizard people there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, the one I've time, seen the video of Paul McCartney. <laughs> yeah, the one time I visited London, I went to a bathroom in a grocery store, and written in Sharpie on the toilet was "The world is flat. Stop believing the lies." Hell yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> Rednecks are everywhere. They're global. Oh, there is a there is a, a an underwater mountain range that connects Appalachia right up through England and Scotland and Ireland. It's so. just a conversation yes. we need to have. Guys. <laughs> yeah. People always tell me I'm crazy, and it's like, hey, let's at least have this conversation. I hear my side of it, you know? <laughs> oh, I love hearing their side of it. <laughs> my favorite thing in the world is to just let them go. You can't snort meth off a globe. Look at this, guys. <laughs> It's better. <laughs> and here's the thing. As a Jewish person, it always comes back to blaming me. Yeah. So my best thing I can do is listen to them, get to the point where they blame the Jews, and then yeah. just say, okay, we've been talking for three minutes. Do you believe I'm capable of anything? I can't even, <laughs> like, you said I can change the world. I can't change my own oil. I was at Jiffy Lube <laughs> this week pulling up a coupon in the car. <laughs> yeah, that's, I've, I've said this on the show before, but it, you're like, it that's it's so fucking boring that that's it's always like oh the Jews are doing it and you're like they can't be doing all the, all the shit all of it <laughs> come with some new fan fiction like, all of it I've you're said, making this up you have agency here like make it like I said Bigfoots or, I don't or know. goblins yeah. you ever think about how powerful the Jews are though <laughs> <laughs> let's really get into yes, it guys. we could handle forty conspiracies <laughs> at once but we can't handle lactose <laughs> <laughs> like I never get offended by Jewish conspiracy theories because I think actually more racist to other races because yeah. you'll have like white people who are saying like yeah my life sucks everything's going wrong for me but it's not my fault clearly someone's gonna be in a position of power to hold me down but for them to be that smart and that powerful they also have to be white <laughs> so clearly it's the Jews because you never hear anything about like these goddamn Puerto Ricans and their weather machines <laughs> <laughs> oh this <laughs> Oh, the, the Portuguese that live in the middle of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> dispense all the pie. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the Italians fake the moon landing. It, it's made of mozzarella cheese. <laughs> if I was a preacher, I'd tell you what I would do. I'd keep on preaching and I'd work on the building too. I'm a working on the building and I'm working on the building. I'm working on the building for my Lord, for my Lord. It's a Holy Ghost building. It's a Holy Ghost building. It's a Holy Ghost Lord. 
This is from uh, Atlanta. Uh, shout out to everybody in ATL. This is from the Atlanta Journal Constitution. At the office of the State Inspector General, uh, there is a uh, woman working there. Her name's Robin Folsom. She was uh, she was pregnant recently. Uh, at least oh. at least. Uh, uh, people thought so, but uh, when a co-worker noticed that a portion of Robin Folsom's pregnant belly was coming away from her body. <laughs> they, <laughs> That's they, not good they, for the baby. <laughs> they believed that maybe, just maybe, the employee was faking her pregnancy. That's right. After reporting the birth of two children previously... <laughs> So we're almost back to the cop where I'm just yes. like, you go, girl. <laughs> you just go ahead and do this. Why not? Uh, so after reporting the birth of two children between July of 2020 and May 2021, Folsom was indicted Thursday by a Fulton County grand jury on three counts of felony false statements and one count of felony identity fraud, the office said. So the 43-year-old Atlanta resident worked as the director of external affairs and supervised uh, the marketing for this uh, office as well. Uh, in October of 2020, she advised the state agency that she was pregnant, and in May 2021, she announced that she had given birth. Uh, so that's great, you know. Like, congrats. So uh, you're so you're telling me she has uh, been indicted because she didn't have kids. <laughs> this is a real miscarriage of justice. <laughs> is what I'm hearing here. Damn. I just want you to know I was listening to you, but I was waiting for you to finish. I was just sitting on that <laughs> hot pun for about 45 <laughs> seconds. Just a real, I'm going to let you finish. No, that's what podcasts are all about. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, see, uh, yeah, so she announced that she'd given birth in May of 2021 and eventually received an email from a person claiming to be the father of the child. So, uh, the, or I should say her work uh, received, received an email, email from yes. a person claiming to be the father of the child, uh, which is what led Folsom being charged with identity fraud. So again, it's very similar to the drug thing where it's like moderation, moderation, my child, don't make a fake dad. Just say the dad exists and keep your fucking mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be a single mother. You'd be yeah. looked down upon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they asked who the father is. That's a violation of my HIPAA law. <laughs> yeah. So the email, like the dad, the quote unquote, the, fake dad sent that's actually her said that the mother had been mandated by the doctor for several weeks of rest following the delivery so it was just like hey uh this is uh this is Bo. i uh was just calling in to say uh you gotta give robin a couple weeks off of work uh you know she's uh she can't really talk right now though she's too babied out you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and they're like uh sir yeah she's not a baby on each tit so her hands are full can't get to the phone <laughs> that's such a weird thing to involve a fake second person like you think they're so not gonna believe you as the mother <laughs> yeah it's like yeah it's like writing the note to the school in your mom's <laughs> handwriting like they're gonna know the state agency approved seven weeks of paid leave which the inspector general's office said uh the agency would not have approved if they had known Folsom had not given birth. So this is the part where I like reach that thing where I'm like, on the one hand, very, very funny that this person did this <laughs> and I absolutely approve. On the other hand, it's like, you should just give everybody seven weeks paid leave in general. Like this is such a long way to go for a thing that in most Western countries is just normal. Fucking Australia gets like a month paid vacation every year. Basically she's playing the game that she's in. And yeah. She's playing it very well. Very well. She just shouldn't have involved a fake dad. Well, this she is messed up the costume, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah that's right. Was it like a belly you could fill over time? I was wondering. Or did that. it have like multiple like stages <laughs> of belly? Stuffing it with tissues <laughs> over nine months. So an investigation by the Inspector General's office revealed that in March of 2021, a co-worker noticed a lower portion of Folsom's stomach coming apart from her body. The co-worker told officials that they believe Folsom was wearing a fake pregnancy stomach so first of all fuck you you snitch ass snitch <laughs> fuck you all the way and the fact that they didn't release their goddamn name there's a witch in my there. fucking Atlanta <laughs> Journal Constitution and I will get her out of there because fuck you when, don't do that and you really hate your co-worker uh, yeah this that's is what the thing you do. Yeah. maybe if this woman sucks it's it's one thing it's it's personal but like in the grand scheme of things like fucking don't hate the player hate the game man <laughs> yeah. hate the fact that in this fucking country we have to go to these stupid links to get time off Fuck you for reporting this lady. Yeah, I'm, she's a hero to me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I think this is hilarious. If I wasn't 
explicitly a freelancer, I would try to fake my own pregnancy because in LA, <laughs> I could get away with it. Very true. Very true. Uh, the coworker <laughs> told officials that they believe Folsom was wearing a fake pregnancy stomach. Folsom also sent pictures of her new baby to various coworkers. Now, this is that shit that gets you caught. Oh, Stop. don't do that. Don't. Dude, a new baby? Just be like, none of your fucking business. I'm not showing you the picture of my new baby. Get the fuck off. Give my baby their privacy. No. <laughs> that's so That's so suspicious. No, it's not. Fuck off. You can't, <laughs> I don't want to talk about the new baby. Not literally say <laughs> fuck off, but just be like, no, you know, I, I'm trying not to keep a phone around. I'm kind of, you know, whatever. Yeah, as, as a recent-ish uncle, I can say, you just say, oh, I'm trying to limit screen time. <laughs> yeah, that's there, it. Done. No one's going to question that, but no. What I'm saying is I would be better at stealing drugs and faking pregnancies. <laughs> <laughs> so she sent pictures of the new baby to various coworkers, but the pictures uh, had varying skin colors. <laughs> So she's like, this is my baby. And then just sent like a picture of like you an know, Asian they child. become more Mexican over time. <laughs> you know? They have, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Late stage onset Asian-ness. That's what we call that. Yeah. They got a little bit of everything, like the <laughs> Skittle flavors in the C4. Yeah. The Skittles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Depending on how the light hits them. Sometimes they look Irish. Sometimes they look Somali. And you yeah, never know. You could never tell. Uh, so in October, shortly after an interview with investigators, Folsom resigned from the state agency. But but this was not the first pregnancy that Folsom had faked. In July of 2020, she announced the birth of another child, but the office learned that there were no birth certificates proving Folsom to be a mother. Following a review of medical and insurance records, no indication was found that Folsom had ever given birth, the office what said. Was her, what was the plan? What was the advantage of doing this? I mean, Paid being time a off. fucking pimp, dude. Being a fucking <laughs> pimp. I'm pimping the system. I'm fucking hanging out on the beach in Cozumel. I got, guess <laughs> what I, guess, guess what I got? A fucking pina colada. Guess what i don't got a baby yeah. <laughs> yeah when covid hit and freelancers were able to get unemployment that was a treat for me because i'm like mm. oh i'm just getting money for nothing and then when it came time to you know like have to go back to work and do things and get out the unemployment i'm just like I wish I thought of faking a pregnancy. That would have been. <laughs> Let's keep this going, dog. So, fraud by state employees will not be tolerated, sour sport attorney general Chris Carr said. So, <laughs> I don't like you, Chris Carr. Shouldn't be fraud. You should just give people time off. Like, uh, well, here's the idea. I'm married, but if I wasn't, I'd be like, if you want a real baby, hit me up. Because yeah. this is the type of <laughs> this is the type of woman that No, they don't want a real baby. I don't want to go th- you shouldn't have to go through all that bullshit. Yeah, like, she doesn't want a real baby either. Dude, if you're <laughs> willing to wear the pregnancy suit to work every day. Oh, we're not gonna have a real baby. I'm just saying it on a podcast <laughs> oh, so I it's documented. You. Oh, she yeah, would yeah, have yeah. to wear it in public. Anytime she like went to the store or anything, also. Ah uh, that's a huge Atlanta's investment. Atlanta's a big city though yeah but still what if you see somebody you know and just randomly in target and you're like oh are you not pregnant right now Dude, go what a, wait here's the thing no one's <laughs> ever gonna do that because yeah. say, go, to the tar- go to the target in kennesaw <laughs> just get out of town and go do your shopping yeah. also if you have a co-worker who's six months pregnant and doesn't look pregnant anymore the last thing you're gonna say is hey what happened <laughs> that's true that's true oh, true very you just start true. breaking down crying <laughs> that's a good out yeah <laughs> yeah um but then you don't get the maternity leave well you just start over you just you just reset that clock and they're like why didn't you say anything i wasn't ready to talk about it yet mm-hmm. mm. by work this is the attorney general again by working with george's independent inspector general we were able to discover investigate and put an end to this alleged deception we will always stand up to protect taxpayer dollars and we look forward to presenting our case in court i would rather my taxpayer dollars go to her than to drones okay that is a hundred percent this is the fucking state where a lot of the small town police departments have goddamn tanks yes as we've talked about fucking smyrna georgia well, has you, a we tank can see why now <laughs> look at what they have to deal with it's like i've been to georgia many times i grew up uh, 15 miles from the border of georgia y'all spend money on the dumbest shit of all time fuck off give this woman seven weeks paid off give her 14 fucking weeks paid off if you're willing to wear a goddamn pregnancy suit everybody should have time off but especially in your case if you're willing to work for it you go girl (laughs) yeah come on baby i love it (laughs) honey honey (laughs) let's make a pregnancy together baby i mean yeah 
the person who reported her is the worst person in the story. Yeah, no, today. well, you could tell a person this crazy would be the worst coworker. Yeah, they, they're like definitely like they're the person who makes up reasons to not do their job. <laughs> what? Where was she working again? She was working at the Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Agency. Let the woman what, have her. So is weeks. this a state? office yeah yeah oh, she so works that's for why the state. all the fraud yeah, yeah 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 yeah. she's working for the state but it's like man, just give her the fucking time off what are you doing yeah, but if you're doing this at arby's i feel like <laughs> there's, right, no there's, there's, there's no crime there's no crime at that point no crime. yeah <laughs> yeah they're just doing this because they feel like they have to, to to look good in front of the fucking stupid rubes who would give a shit that someone's yeah, doing this set an example guys no more fake pregnancies we're yeah we're coming down on that now just think of the tax dollars <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, I don't know I've been told Them told you with me Sweet chili roll Sweet chili roll Sweet chili roll Nat, Sam, we have time for just one more segment, and it is time yes. for our jam of the week. And this week, oh uh, yes, we are with hanging out Rob Halford and the boys, Judas Priest, breaking the law. <laughs> oh fuck yeah, 1980, British Steel, one of the greatest rock albums ever made, and also great YouTube video where uh, Judas Priest. Robs a bank with the power of rock and roll, but what are they stealing? Their own gold record? Question mark. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> weird video. I had never seen the video for Breaking the Law until I started looking at these comments, and it's a it's a cool video. But then when it is revealed what they're stealing is their own record, it just gets really confusing. Isn't that essentially what OJ Simpson did, what actually went to jail <laughs> that for? That is exactly what OJ went to jail for, stealing his own memorabilia back. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Halford kicks the door in. You're not going anywhere. Uh, technically, that makes it kidnapping. I found that out on OJ Made in America. If you tell someone you're not going anywhere, that's another big old charge on your uh, on your record there. You guys aren't going anywhere until we finish this segment. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> this has gone from a podcast <laughs> to a situation. Yeah. Hostage yeah. crisis. Uh, well, yeah, this is, uh, this is Judas Priest. This is Breaking the Law. And let us get down into the YouTube comments comments for this tune first up nicholas murley from 11 months ago sounds like a song that i'd play on the purge if it was an actual thing that happened in america if the purge does happen i will be playing this song oh good i'm glad right. this guy's out here cool except when the purge is happening you're not breaking the law <laughs> No, it's yes. the point. Yeah. That's, that's that is the point, point. But also, this is the exact same type of person that I knew back in college who had a detailed plan of what to do in a zombie apocalypse, uh-huh. but to this day still doesn't have a retirement plan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, if the purge breaks out, I got to have a playlist. What are we doing? It's like, hey, do you know what an Ira or a Roth is? Uh-huh. Ira Roth yeah, is the NPR guy, isn't he? Uh, Michael from 11 years ago. God, when I hear that opening riff, I just want to fuck it hard. So fucking classic. Brings a tear to my eye. How ignorant today's popular music is in terms of actual music. <laughs> new age music can't even get my dick hard. Just, I drink a C4 before I listen to some yeah. Eminem. I cannot fuck Dua Lipa. Uh, <laughs> when, when he said... Uh, I want to fuck it. <laughs> the riff. He's talking about this uh, guitar riff that you're hearing. He wants to. <laughs> he wants to fuck it hard. <laughs> and so, I mean, it's good. It's a good I, riff. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of the logistics of fucking a riff because I do remember back in high school when I was horny and would put my wiener on anything. I remember laying on my back with my acoustic guitar over my lap and the vibration felt kind of good on my wiener. So I guess if you play it hard enough there on an go. acoustic guitar, you could fuck the riff. Or yeah. Yeah. Although that's Dick the riff. to the amp. Yeah. That's to the amp. But that's, that's technically the riff fucking you, though. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're gay for that riff, bro. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Miguel Sandoval from 10 years ago. I never go breaking the law at all. Why? Because it will lead to consequences that put people like them 
or me in jail for life. <laughs> what Thanks. kind of crimes do you choose not to commit, Thanks, sir? Miguel, <laughs> sir. You're doing the life crimes. Those <laughs> are the ones you're thinking about. <laughs> Here's the thing. We're laughing at him for being lame, but if that one cop actually <laughs> took that advice, he wouldn't be in the trouble he's in right now. This is a fair point. Uh, <laughs> we all need to listen to Miguel a little more. Yeah. <laughs> I got you, Miguel. Uh, Dalibor Siska from six years ago. A few days ago, I was calculating for fun how many years i will spend in jail if cops catch me every time i break the law the answer is four thousand years join the dark side <laughs> that's, the, right. that's the nerdiest way ever to yeah. admit that you're a serial <laughs> rapist <laughs> <laughs> they must never yeah, know see including like speeding and running red lights yeah and yeah then <laughs> getting <laughs> warrants for those and, and then not dealing with the war <laughs> and being the man known as the phantom strangler <laughs> I, I hope he's also going hypothetical with it like he's does nothing wrong in his life other than <laughs> like parking in a no parking area gets a ticket but in his mind he doesn't pay the ticket the cops come for him he murders a cop <laughs> and he's on the lamb and he's doing all these things and he's just sitting there having done nothing wrong just thinking if they only knew <laughs> uh, Leonard Anderson from one year ago my friend used to play this song in his black 1960s Mercedes I don't know how he could afford that car because all of his small salary was usually spent on alcohol he probably stole the car some money to buy it he was not very honest but funny he got a lot of enemies. He died at 30 in a ditch. Nobody, there it is. <laughs> nobody knows how, though. There it is. I, I've been waiting for that because every <laughs> single song, no matter if the song is more than two years old, yeah. you will have this moth-level soliloquy <laughs> of in my younger days when I thought I was invincible but eventually realized I wasn't. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, my taste in music is terrible. I listen to nothing but power metal, so here we are. This is my wheelhouse. Yeah. Pop punk, Weird Al, and Insane clown posse that is my exclusive <laughs> playlist my man and whenever i go and like find any of the playlists you always have like oh man this takes me back to the days of skateboarding in the summer heat my friends and i didn't have anything to do i do anything to go back to those days r.i.p bill <laughs> yeah yeah r.i.p lauren i can't believe your head was torn from your body in a car crash and you're like jesus There's christ some- i'm trying to listen to fucking <laughs> weird al <laughs> yep every time i hear this i think of a dead man in a ditch <laughs> <laughs> Rock on, My brothers. life is horrible. Uh, How did he die? Breaking the law. <laughs> uh, Philip Telega from five years ago. Killer guitar. Killer song. Real metal. Hell yeah. Love that fire. Sex. Drugs. Alco Kohal. <laughs> Ladies, this is heavy metal. Break owl rules. Law. All right. First of all, <laughs> that, why? <laughs> that one, he started off at like six shots of Jack Daniels and ended like in the 13 to 14. Lane. Yes. I also just, why is there no vodka that's chocolate favored called Al Coco Hall? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Ooh, man. We're also, gonna... I love because I don't listen to modern music but I'm not shitty about it. You know, it's just, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm stuck in my ways. I'll give it a chance. It's just usually not for me. Sure. But I love the fact that if you all like, because I, I like pop punk and I know Machine Gun Kelly's, Kelly's trying to bring it back. So I'm like, I'll give this a chance. Yeah. Not for me, but good effort. I don't see anybody in the comments being like, this is so much better than that old supposed music. Yes, that is 100% right. Yeah. Nobody's being shitty about old music and like their taste. It's always just like, oh, these fucking kids. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, the, Every one of these comment section has a, a Justin Bieber thing. Yes. And it was way more common like 10 years ago, but you'll always see like, fucking Justin Bieber, I hate him. And, uh, and you're like, yeah, I don't, if you go to a Justin Bieber song, I don't think there's anyone being like, Metallica. It is. Like, <laughs> It's, it's been around forever. Like There were people, you know, hundreds of years ago going like, oh, these kids and their Mozarts. Yeah. <laughs> Jazz music's going to ruin humanity. You know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, Christian Holmes from eight years ago. I used to play this song every Saturday while taking my ex-wife to her church. 
She was a Seventh Day Adventist. They believe in all kinds of laws. Maybe that's why she's my ex now. <laughs> there it is. I'll tell you. <laughs> I used to do this thing that uh, to piss my wife off on purpose. <laughs> and now she's what my a, ex. What a dumb ass. Inconceivable. <laughs> uh, you know, I like this one because it uh, mentions someone by their first and last name, but also their fucking screen name is pretty great. Kiefer to Jesus, real love, me Todd Reese from 11 months ago. <laughs> my soulmate, my future wife, Dana Mitchell, Doug's daughter. Love you. <laughs> cool. That's I like it, but I really just like uh, oh, Kiefer to Jesus, real love, me Todd Reese. Oh, no. Is this the modern equivalent of a scrawling your initials and a heart on a tree yes. where you just put it as a YouTube comment? Hey, if I know anything about Dana Mitchell and, and for that matter, Doug, her father, they be in the Jesus, Judas Priest comments. Yeah, <laughs> they love this song and reading the comments. I also love that he <laughs> doesn't say anything about her other than her father's name, yeah, which yeah. is you are defined by being a man's property. <laughs> Love you. You wouldn't believe the dowry that I got from my beloved Dana Mitchell. Uh, jack off from four years ago. Oh, my account. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best song to have sex with. Banging. <laughs> this Banging. guy fucks the riff too. <laughs> yeah, he does. Oh, but I didn't finish. This is the best song to have sex with. Banging the wife, banging the wife, oh, banging God. the wife, banging this, the this wife. This guy's probably divorced, too. <laughs> yes. I, I usually will always... He's, he's yes. cut a hole in a picture. And he's, <laughs> yeah. I will always try to yes and, but if you're breaking the law while having sex, <laughs> it's, oh. it's bad. <laughs> you're a bad... Uh, God-hacked site world leader go to my new site from two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that all a username? That's the username. God hacked site world leader. Go to my new site. Okay. <laughs> From two years ago. So I think this is a compromised account. <laughs> They're yeah. saying this account got hacked. I, I just didn't know that your name could be that long. It's like comedians on Twitter being like, uh, Bob Zadie, uh, fucking Chuckle Hut, April 13th through 19th. Tickets on sale. It's like, anyways, go on. <laughs> Sorry, I've, I've had a mini seizure there. <laughs> Hi, my most holy husband and boys. Together forever in eternity, love, infinity. I'm happy to have you in my tabernacle. I created my beautiful arch, husband, and half-god boys. Praise-o. Soon. Wait, he ended by saying soon? <laughs> soon, with three exclamation points. I was about to say that's the most wholesome religious message I would imagine finding on a Judas Priest song because <laughs> it would usually be like this is the devil's music play it backwards they're telling you to kill yourself blah blah he's literally just coming in and being like I just want you to know God loves you everything's cool and but I have built an arch yes <laughs> But then he ends with soon, and then there's a menacing undertone to it that I am not comfortable with. And a bunch of emojis that ha it's a baby, a kiss, uh, a finger point, a bed with someone sleeping in it. It's it's very, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> don't go to sleep soon. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is, I love this one here. Sid from six years ago. Breaking the law is my daily tradition. I aim to have broken all of the Swedish laws before I die, but with so many bullshit laws that here in Sweden, I have to live until I'm older than the Phantom. 300 years. Uh, <laughs> so. It's so funny how people just bring their life into whatever they're doing. Just like, <laughs> well, I was sitting here thinking how pissed I am about Swedish laws. Yeah. <laughs> Every single one of them, which I want to break, <laughs> including murder, murder and, and other yeah. terrible ones. Murder, arson, yeah. necrophilia, <laughs> pedophilia, <laughs> hebophilia, bestiality, yeah. just all of them. But there's so this fucking Swedes. <laughs> so many laws, so little time. Uh, this one actually, in a rare in a rare case uh, for this segment, this one is actually in reference to the video. So there's a section where the security guard at the bank that Judas Priest is robbing kind of looks at the screen and sees Judas Priest, and then just kind of gives him like a little, oh wow, those crazy kids. So uh, <laughs> these guys again. <laughs> these guys again. They're just here to steal their own gold record. Uh, Bill Steinfeld from one year ago. 
What the hell is with the smirk on the security guard's face as he watches the closed circuit monitor? Is this incompetent jagoff an accessory to this crime? Screw him and this unrealistic portrayal of monetary security. There are many examples of law breaking that do not include the participation and or inaction of police officers. Screw you, Judas Priest, and the BBC. Piss off. I can actually wow. speak on I can actually speak on this with a somewhat position of authority because I was actually a security guard for about a year. <laughs> yeah? You? I sure <laughs> was. And also, I was apparently one of the better security guards they had because <laughs> Where I, was this at? This was... It uh, was at a jail in North Carolina. <laughs> where I was supposed to be uh, checking out the evidence locker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was... Uh, off-campus housing at my university in Orlando. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah, apparently the guy I replaced uh, got fired when there was a car <laughs> careening towards the little like house shack we were in and his thought was oh, let me get out and run and jump kick this car. And when the what? police showed up to give a report he couldn't speak enough English to actually give a report for what happened. Did you go to college in a Steven Seagal movie? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, Orlando is a Steven Seagal yeah, movie, yeah, so, so the answer is emphatically yes. <laughs> oh, my God. But I will say I had to do, I think it was 24 hours of training to be a security officer, mm -hmm. which was needless because ultimately you can boil the job down to call an adult. Yeah, yeah. Observe and report. Yeah, that's literally <laughs> all we do. It's I remember we had like a final exam and no one understood this. It was literally saying like, all right, what do you do if you see a fire? And they're like, ooh, we grab the fire extinguisher. We run. I was like, nope, you call an adult. <laughs> <laughs> like, this, I just like that this guy is mad that it's portraying the police bad. And this is from a year ago. So, you know, this guy was just like watching shit pop off in Minnesota and just being like, well, at least I could take refuge in my favorite thing, which is heavy metal. And he's like, hey, that cop sucks. And stop showing the cops that suck. <laughs> and also security guards are like, he's doing an exemplary job. He is observing. He will eventually report. Yeah. The one time I reported in my entire year working that job was at one point I saw somebody jump over the fence into the facility. And I was like, all right, I'll make a note of that later. Because I'm not going to call the cops to be like, I saw somebody jump a fence. What they do? Scamper. Yeah. <laughs> not going to waste their time. I just wrote down, saw someone jump a fence. That was weird. <laughs> and also, mostly all you can do is, like, just smirk. I remember I once I like saw somebody like pissing in a bush, and they were very drunk and they got scared because they didn't know I had no authority. And they said, "Am I going to jail now?" And I said, <laughs> "Maybe move along." <laughs> uh, the Bachelor Frog from nine years ago. These guys were fucking bitches, doing coke, smoking weed, drinking excessively, driving drunk, dropping acid, fucking dudes up, fucking dudes. Getting the cops calling them for being loud, killing strippers, shooting guns inside the city limits, <laughs> running red lights, and in general being metal as fuck. And this was long before Tumblr was around. Damn. What a dispatch from nine years ago, man. A Tumblr like reference. It. That's such a funny thing to also bring up. Is like, And the kids are fucking on Tumblr. Yeah. <laughs> we used to do this before the internet. I also just want to point out the fact that I was enjoying it. I mean, he started off with, these guys were fucking bitches. I'm like, not Rob, all of Rob them. Rob wasn't, no. But then he brains in <laughs> yeah. fucking dudes. I'm like, it's inclusive. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It is inclusive. <laughs> Representation right. matters. And just when you're floating on that little cloud of like, oh, he's like, and they killed a bunch of strippers. That was cool. And you're like, whoa, 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 what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> huh? you, you snuck that one in. No, they, first of all, no, they didn't. What? <laughs> yeah, I missed that episode of Behind the Music. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that reminds me of uh, uh, I was headlined at a club in Boise uh, a few weeks ago, and my opener, who was fucking hilarious, but like he was like very political, and the good people of Boise were not ready to be yelled at about how Joe Biden is a war criminal oh, okay. or Obama is a war criminal. Right, sure, sure. And they just were. It was so funny too, because like he was doing so good. He was doing critical race theory to them. Yes. Yeah. He was doing so good. <laughs> like he opens up with just something. I was like, oh, I look crazy. Da 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 da. And also just slips it in there and just like loses it for the last five minutes. And I loved it. I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. yeah. And I go up there and I'm doing my thing. And I just slip in the middle of an applause. 
applause break, I just slipped in, Obama was a war criminal, and then went on with the stuff that they liked. And I literally <laughs> said, it's like, you just clapped at Obama being a war criminal. <laughs> and that's what that guy did. It's like, oh, I was, I was having a good time, and you tricked me. You tricked me into being on board with killing people who want nothing more than to give me a boner, which... <laughs> Like, is a much f- more fun way to do it than drinking, like, Skittles shell flavored <laughs> energy drink. <laughs> but uh, I'm raging over here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. I know your denim is not bad <laughs> enough. I uh, got a couple more here. Uh, this one, Sad Carter was working tonight because uh, this is very. Uh, <laughs> This is this is amazing if this has any validity to it, uh, especially knowing, uh, you know, people listening to the show know what's up. Uh, James Kendall from four years ago. If someone took a shit on Donald Trump's Hollywood Boulevard star, it was probably me. <laughs> I've got a long history of disrespecting authority, but I'm lazy, so that's probably not my poop. Huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're not sure if it's legal or if I did it, but if I had the intention, I aided and abetted it for sure. The law is nasty, and everyone should shit on Hollywood Boulevard, and they still let me vote around here. <laughs> I like how I like how he d- admitted to it and then pulled it back. Like if I if were to I, do yeah, that, it's like OJ Simpson's <laughs> book. If I shitted, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I can confirm various stories of his thing being shit on by either humans or dogs. Yeah, 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 star. yeah. <laughs> If the underwear doesn't fit, I did not. Shit. <laughs> I, I was on Hollywood Boulevard the other day and I saw a bunch of like 60 year old white guys and they're standing around the star looking so happy and I walked by him Jennifer Lopez so just so excited uh, they're taking pictures next to it they're all like balding and look like they're fucking Republican cops <laughs> or something visiting just, from out of state just super into J-Lo star yeah over, I wonder over what, there by the Westin, the uh-huh, W. That's right. I also mm-hmm. want to know what facet of J Lo they love the most. If this, they're like very much into her acting, like are they very much like, oh, I love enough. That is my favorite movie. Well, this is a, a music one. She has a musical uh, yeah. s- oh. star. She does. Yeah, I don't so, know why. I don't know why that's what they went. Does she have a movie one too? No, no, just the just the music one, as far as I know. Okay, yeah. Jenny from the Block. Jenny from the Block. Flagrant disrespect to Made in Manhattan. No, yeah, her <laughs> act, her acting is probably better than her musical career. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, Whenever I see the billboards of her that say "Marry Me," I said, "I wish." <laughs> uh, variant Maga Janian from eight years ago. Oh, she was on board early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My brother caught his son listening to this and freaked out and beat the shit out of him. Ha ha Breaking ha, the law. Ha. Breaking the law. <laughs> he domestic was... violence. Domestic <laughs> violence. Breaking his arm. Breaking his, his arm. arm. <laughs> he was convinced it was devil music. So there it is. We had to throw one in there, you know? Uh, <laughs> uh, and finally, Kurt Bader from one year ago. When your HOA says no loud music after 10 and you hide wireless speakers in your dickweed neighbor's yard and you just blast the shit out of this until the cops show up and they give the bastard a disturbing the peace citation and they still can't find those speakers. Raking the lawn. Raking the lawn. Okay, that's... <laughs> Nobody's that stupid no. that they couldn't find a blaring speaker. This is one of those, like, this guy's doing some fantasy about his HOA he hates. I was just about to say, I love a guy who has fan fiction about himself. That rules. <laughs> I, do. I do as well, but also your privilege is showing that when you are living in a community where you own a home... Even if it was only, what, you said four years ago? Uh, No, that one was one year. One year ago. Okay, so still in the middle of this housing crisis that we're having. Inflated, you have a house. I don't know if he's in L.A. Wherever he is, you you have privilege (laughs) enough to own a house, and you're also spending the money to get hidden speakers to put into it. Get fucked. I, yeah. I love the what passive is- aggressiveness of wanting to get revenge mm-hmm. on your neighbor. Be like, but I'm not going to let him know I'm going to do it. I'm just hiding speakers and I'm <laughs> fucking, I'm hiding in the back of the yard going, dee. 
Wait, breaking the law, breaking the law. <laughs> this is also like, yes, and it's completely it's the spirit of the song, which is like, ooh, I'm gonna do a funny, cute little YouTube prank. <laughs> like, if you under if you understood this song, you would set their house on fire. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, also, I, uh, his last name is Bader, so you have to imagine he's compensating for a life of being called Master Bader. You know, oh, just yeah. uh, no, he's just good. he got a shit hand dealt to him there in the surname department, but that's okay. That is. Judas, motherfucking priest, breaking the law from breaking the law. British breaking Steel. The law. Breaking the law. Oh, and that is our program. Nat Bimel, uh, tell people where they can find you and about your new project coming up later next month. Ooh, well, you can find me anywhere at Nat Bimel. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. I just started a TikTok because I'm going to be 37 this year, and hey that now. seems like the thing a 37-year-old should do. You got to. You got to. And uh, come March 18th, my second stand-up album will be released. It is called Nihilist Pep Talk. I got a little uh, preview of the album cover, and it is fucking hilarious. Uh, yeah, so that's awesome. Why, thank you very much. Yes, it will uh, be on you know Amazon, iTunes, Spotify, Pen. Pandora. It's everywhere. Uh, I'm very, very proud of it. If you like dark humor, if you like uh, uplifting dick jokes, I always say that my stand-up is less stand-up and more uh, persuasive essays cleverly disguised with genitalia punchlines. Hey, there you go. So, so yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, there you go. That's that's, <laughs> that's my that's my brand. Nat is one of the funniest people I know, so oh, definitely shucks. go find that record. It's going to be great. Uh, March 18th. March 18th. We'll, uh, we'll retweet it when it comes out and all that stuff uh, so people can find it. Uh, Sam, where can people find you online? Uh, well, they can actually find me in a Swedish prison. I'm convicted of 4,000 <laughs> years worth of various crimes. I've done all the crimes in Sweden. <laughs> I've, I was just for fun calculating. Even that. the little ones like stealing <laughs> licorice from wee babes. <laughs> you can find me at Slam Harder on Twitter. I don't know where else. All the other places. Just go for that. Hell yeah. Go for that. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rivers Langley, and you can follow our show on Twitter at The Goods Pod. The best way to support our show head to patreon.com slash the goods pod second best way to support the show go to apple podcasts uh where you can rate review and subscribe and uh show the attitude of gratitude because if you do not have the attitude of gratitude daddy fuck you we're gonna hide bluetooth speakers in your front yard <laughs> we're gonna play jenny from the block all night long till the cops show up and give you 300 xanax and then, write you a ticket and then throw a broom at your feet where you will float away <laughs> oh and i got a, a song to play at the end here our friend uh, tom sherlock uh listening mm-hmm. out in utah he's got a fucking album coming out in march as well and he sent me the first single so check this out this is tom sherlock with funky monkey like dusty roads baby and we'll see you next time the sidewalk is burning through the soles in my shoes the sunlight is lifting all the souls from their blue
from the woods was recorded and edited by me rivers langley you can find our show on twitter at the goods pod our theme song was composed by jonas the space cowboy this was a brain freeze podcast